So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, uh, first of all, thank you very, very much for invitation for this very, very interesting event. And uh, firstly, I introduce myself. My name is uh, Sergei Chobin. I'm an architect, uh, graduated and lived a uh, longer time in St. Petersburg in Russia, and then uh, emigrated to Germany. And now I'm uh, already many years as architect in Germany. And 2006, uh, I have decided to organize together with my friend, Sergei Kuznetsov, an office in Moscow, uh, because it was quite a uh, pity for me that uh, uh, even in detail, the building quality in my country where I was born was still not on the, on the level I could, uh, I could uh, uh, imagine for me. So we try uh, in our firm uh, speech uh, to bring the quality not only in the uh, quality of all project, but uh, first of all in the quality of surfaces, of smallest details, because we speak here and I've heard about uh, many uh, speeches uh, in this ACH marathon and we speak every time about uh, European uh, quality of uh, surrounding for, of architecture and in first line is of course is the quality of uh, details, the quality of surfaces, the quality of what we see if we go or pedestrian way and uh, see the small details what our uh, historical uh, colleagues uh, could make uh, very very good. Uh, first of all, I show very short three works uh, what are made in our office. The first one, maybe what you know, uh, it is our project for the Biennale Russian Pavilion of uh, 2012. Uh, what we made uh, exact on the way, what I think is very important. You create the form, the spectacular or significant form or maybe a very simple form, but then you fill this form with the smallest details. In these uh, samples, these details were also very uh, full of information because the people could come in and to read uh, by their gadgets they get by entrance uh, about the information of uh, innovating town Skolkova, what the pavilion was made about. But uh, in the first step, you see only very interesting spaces made from these small patterns of uh, QR codes. And that's what I think is architecture. It's a significant form, but in this significant form, you bring significant surfaces and details what could be speak with you on the direct way is here or indirect way as architecture makes it uh, also in historical times and in the better samples also now. Uh, in the underground floor, we made also some other surface. it, uh, surfaces. It uh, goes about gated towns. So the towns in Soviet Union were absolutely under secret. You couldn't go in. You could only look through the fence, through the small gaps in the fence, and see the life in the cities, but doesn't touch the cities, uh, don't touch the cities, don't enter in the cities. And that was about uh, this underground floor. So the past of uh, scientist towns and the future of scientist towns, what was upstairs with the Skolkova innovative town. Uh, another project what I made uh, in uh, Russia is an office building uh, for the big tenant, uh, but that is a clear sample for very uh, normal, very normal office building, uh, where the form is very, very normal, uh, right corner, uh, cornered form, but uh, so far you go to the, uh, to the house and you see from the narrow distance the details of this house. Uh, the house begins to speak with you and uh, to begins to speak through the uh, complexity of the surface, the complexity of details. Uh, you see the monolith corners of the building, you see the natural stone curved, uh, you see double, double floor, uh, double skin facade, it's a very energetic, uh, good function building. And uh, you go more and more in the detail, and of course you go inside, and that was one very important principle, that with all details, with all complexity of working on the structure, uh, you go till to smallest detail, to door lever, uh, to elements of interior, uh, because uh, only on this way you understand the building, not only from outside, but really from inside till the smallest detail, like uh, this door lever was made specially for, the, for this house, and 
uh, mirrors, mirrors the form of uh, surface uh, of this house. And the third uh, sample is a big uh, public building. It is a pal aquatic palace in uh, Kazan for University uh, in uh, 2013. And I can uh, say frankly that uh, to get this quality in Russia is of course much more difficult as in European countries because you don't have such a school of uh, workers, of uh, uh, work uh, workshops that could make uh, this, qui uh, this quality of work. And also here uh, we speak not only with the form of the building, like a wave, but also with the surface of the building. Uh, now with uh, stainless steel construction and uh, glass, but the uh, surface goes from one material to another and speaks about water, about structure of water. And if you go inside, so you see it's like uh, a little bit like a Gothic cathedral where, where you see the window at the end of the space. And you see uh, the wooden construction is made by, uh, is made by this uh, water sports stadium, what is quite innovative for Russia. Uh, very ecological and very uh, low uh, ener energetic uh, construction. And uh, you see that the smallest details, uh, like this uh, jump uh, tower, are uh, working together with the form of uh, old building. So you, uh, you see that the principle is to go from the big form, from significant form, but to try to uh, explain that to the small details. And now about the project, what was chosen uh, for this mar uh, ARC Marathon, what I'm very glad and uh, I, think, uh, I, I think it's really a very uh, important uh, building for our studio. And uh, it is not only in a building, but it's also an initial of us, of my, uh, because I like, I collect and I draw architectural drawings uh, nearly all my life. I have studied in the St. Petersburg Academy of Art, where the architectural drawing was a very important point of the study of education. And uh, so far I could, I uh, have began to collect architectural drawings and I show some samples because sometimes we forget uh, which power is behind uh, architectural drawing as an art of thinking for architects in the past but also now. Uh, because a lot of uh, many uh, well-known and less-known architects make very, very interesting architectural drawings as the uh, uh, roots uh, of their ideas. And if you see the drawings from the different times, like Quarengi uh, by the first, uh, was born nearby from here in Bergamo, or Piranesi, or uh, Ferdinando Bibiena, or Leo von Klenze, you see very different ideas behind these drawings or Boris Eofan, who has studied in Rome and uh, was very important constructivist uh, and uh, later Stalinist architect uh, in Russia. Uh, Gail Frake, what was a very a lot of studying in Italy. And uh, you see everywhere very different uh, ways to think. And I wanted one day uh, to show that, uh, to organize a foundation, uh, what could help to show the architectural drawings and to explain about architectural drawing as a part of architectural thinking, very important part of architectural thinking, where you think really with your body. You draw with your body and you create your ideas not only with your mind, but with your body. That's a significant and amazing drawing by Yakov Chernikov. And that's one, uh, for example, from quite other um, point uh, of architectural history of Russia, Palace of Soviets by Eofan, or Hugh Ferris, very interesting charcoal drawing, uh, or Libius Woods, very, very contemporary, over contemporary architecture. The exhibition of Libius Woods was uh, uh, one before in our museum and had a lot, uh, really a lot of visitors were coming to see these amazing drawings uh, of amazing architect. And of course, the architects we know now, like for example, Frank Gehry, this very small uh, part of lines, but uh, how he brings uh, this idea uh, of his architecture, it's uh, not less amazing as a very perfect drawings you have seen uh, before. But it is not only a part I like collect and uh, amaze about it, but it's also my own signature. Uh, so far I draw by myself, and that's a line of my drawings, and I not only try to make 
like observatory drawings, like to come as a tourist in some, in some uh, town and to draw something, but I try to learn this oldness of surface, this way, this way how the details could work or not work in the, uh, in the old and new architecture. And this is drawing for different times I made uh, uh, for myself to, uh, to study how the different surfaces like this backside of Pantheon where you see that the old structure of uh, brick, of marble, how they uh, play uh, with the uh, light, uh, with each other. And that's for me a very important part of the architecture, not to speak about form, not to speak about spectacularity uh, between nature and the form, but to speak about surface it, uh, itself, because if you built in the town, if you built in the surrounding of other buildings, you have to ask yourself how your building would be older, how your details would work in many years uh, and speak uh, with the visitors are coming in the city and uh, enter your building and uh, see at, the, at your building. And uh, you see uh, this in the studies that uh, in the towns I look not only for silhouettes but also for patterns, uh, how the facades and different elements are coming together. Like this Chicago element where we see the smallest, smallest ornaments on the surface, but very, very interesting, very powerful, very powerful game uh, between this bridge and two elements of uh, skyscrapers of the uh, beginning of this century. And of course, I was so glad to see uh, even by life and to speak with Oscar Nima, he was already 104, uh, but I met, uh, I met him in his studio in um, Brasilia, in, um, um, in Rio, and uh, in his architecture, I think this, uh, this speaking with form and also with the details, not a lot of details, but they are so, uh, so clear and the surface are so interesting, and I ma made uh, the series of uh, uh, drawings about his architecture. He explained his architecture like you see the mountains of Copacabana and that is an architecture I make. Uh, it's a very, really very significant experience I had in my life uh, where you see how contemporary architecture could be drawn also because it's very difficult to draw uh, contemporary architecture but in the best samples uh, you can see it and after that I try to create uh, the compositions uh, by myself to made from the uh, contemporary architecture. And in, the, in this case, it's very important for me, uh, like to see it here, this uh, contact between old architecture and contemporary parts. Because I think already 100 years, uh, we don't speak not only about uh, harmony in the architecture, but we speak about contrast in the architecture. We speak about uh, finding context in the own architecture to make a very contrastful dialogue between older and new parts. And very important part of the architecture of Fint in 21st century is this contrastful dialogue between new and old. And if you see this picture, you see also uh, this idea to integrate new parts in the old structure of the city and make uh, on this way a very interesting game between many contrastful uh, parts uh, of architecture. And of course, there are many uh, very important point how to come from the drawing uh, to the architecture. And for example, this first building I made in Berlin, uh, the gallery, like a very, very simple frame uh, on the broad between very old cemetery of uh, Jewish cemetery was destroyed in the Nazi time and uh, old garden and one semi-transparent uh, semi wall uh, makes a dialogue between this, uh, between this uh, old wall of cemetery and the garden before. It's a very small girl in my first art project I made already for 20 years. And uh, on this way, uh, through the searching, through the drawings, uh, I come, we come to uh, the Museum of Architectural Drawing as a project, what we made um, not, uh, not just for ourselves, because it's a foundation. The foundation has curator uh, council, and for this curator council, uh, I have chosen and uh, was um, was already a, s a safe made uh, organization in this uh, uh, in this foundation. Uh, for this council, we made uh, we made this project. Uh, the lot is very interesting because it is not far from uh, Aida's gallery. Everybody maybe knows. 
this very, very important foundation for contemporary architecture in Berlin. And it is in the old part of the city, Prenzlauer Berg, what is, uh, what is really very significant for very good substance of uh, ground time uh, buildings from um, end of 19th, beginning of 20th century. And if you see the building, uh, maybe you recognize uh, why I've spoken um, so much about another buildings and about drawings. Uh, because from one point, uh, we see quite hard contrast to the surrounding. Uh, because I think on this way, uh, all surrounding and this building uh, follow very, very interesting dialogue to each other. And of course, the building can make a quite interesting uh, endpoint of the ensemble uh, of uh, this courtyard of Pfefferberg. Pfefferberg is an old beef beer factory in Berlin. The beer factory was built on the higher points, on the hills, because the cellars of beer factories should be dry. And so far, this, uh, this point is quite high in Berlin. That's why Prenzlauer Hills, Prenzlauer Berger. Um, the building is, uh, has five floors, and one floor in the underground is very small. So we have, uh, we have here seven to 12, um, seven to 12 meter all side. And we were allowed uh, to build four floors in the roof. And that is a contemporary transcription of the roof. Uh, so uh, we had to go step back as the old roofs are going of the, uh, on their own way. We were going on the same way, but with a step back to make two terraces uh, from both sides, from uh, west and east, and to make the last floor uh, smaller as the four uh, before. It is a very uh, clear. It is a very clear function. You come in from the street. Uh, you have the entrance hall in the ground. Uh, you have two exhibition halls uh, with a small uh, room where you can come out and uh, make a little bit rest to look at catalog and you have archive, and you have uh, curator and office space uh, quite upstairs. Uh, for drawings, of course, it's very, very important function. It is not like, like to make a building with windows or without windows, because architect likes to do that. Uh, drawings are very sensitive material, so you have to make humidity of 50%, uh, 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 you have to make constant temperature of 20%, absolutely equal what's happened outside. And in this museum, uh, we expected, and it is now reality, we expected to make exhibitions of very, very high quality. To the, uh, to the exhibitors by us uh, are Johnson Museum, Ecole des Beaux-Arts from Paris, uh, Albertina from Vienna, Victoria and Albert from London. And you understand that also uh, the works they bring in, and the first exhibition was a 15 watercolors by Piranesi. You can expect what what is the insurance uh, cost of that is. So the place should be completely safe, not, not only in insurance reason, in security reason, but also in, in the point of humidity and the point of daylight or no daylight and uh, very, very good, uh, very good defense from the outside climate. That's why we have chosen uh, the concrete, uh, custom place concrete, because the waterproof concrete could make very good defense for the outside humidity from the outside climate and to bring the humidity and the temperature inside of the building complete in order, independent from that, what's happened outside. And I can say that the building is 20, 25% uh, and, and more energy efficient as a museum law uh, has to make it. So we are 20 to 25 percent more efficient as uh, after very strong German laws from museums, uh, it should be. Uh, from the other point, through these uh, corners and uh, cantilevers, uh, we could create for every space in museum their own shape. It is not like a right angle corner, but every, every hole, it is one whole floor, uh, has really his own structure his own outline, and it is very, very good, uh, of course, for creating exhibitions uh, of, uh, different, of different themes. So if you, go, uh, if you go now, we see how this building works uh, by day, and that is the thing I uh, explained already before. 
we are not only searching the contrast between uh, older part and new part in the surrounding, uh, we are searching for the contrast and for the context inside of the building. So far, like more or less, uh, uh, more or less uh, very monolith, very solid base of the building, uh, has a crown with extra, extraordinary contemporary architecture with a cantilever on the uh, fourth floor. And that is, uh, that is also uh, the dialogue what I, uh, uh, what I mean uh, in my drawings, where the new parts uh, of the constructions are coming on the older or solid, uh, more solid parts of the building and make this contrastful dialogue with each other, what I think the contemporary architecture makes now very interesting, and what for the contemporary architecture, from my point of view, is very interesting now. But of the, on the other side, if you come narrow to the building, it is very important that this quite spectacular, as I expect, form doesn't be more poor by coming narrow to the building. That's why uh, we made this structure on the building. That is, this structure is like, like a pieces of drawings and it's like a philosophical sentence that from the drawings, the building will be built. The drawings are the idea from what the building will be built. From the drawings, like from the structure of concrete, uh, will be made uh, this form. Uh, there are drawings or there are patterns of uh, two Italian uh, stage designers uh, from Milano, by the way, uh, Pietro uh, di Gotardo Gonzaga and uh, um, Angelo Toselli. Uh, Gonzaga was very famous uh, on La Scala and was going after that in 18th century to uh, Russia and uh, made uh, himself very famous also as an architect and also as a stage designer in Russia. And Angelo Toselli was his follower. And on every floor, uh, we have like this Gonzaga and this Toselli elements. They were computer generated from the originals and uh, made uh, by Rabi matrices. Uh, they come inside of uh, uh, custom place uh, concrete, uh, concrete forms and was made together with this concrete by, uh, as a, by the side. It is, it is, not, it is not a plate uh, coming uh, are coming from outside, but it is a part. It is a part of building was made on site. Uh, and if you come, if you come narrow, you see you see even more elements, even more details. And I think it is very very important function of contemporary architecture not to be more pure as a as a old architecture in the detail, in the small uh, in the small elements. But on the other side, as I told already. Uh, the uh, waterproof concrete from outside, uh, the glass insulation in between and cladding inside bring very, very perfect uh, situation for, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, defense from the outside climate and to make very sure construction, not to bring humidity, not to bring climate changes inside of the building. Uh, so we are far by this, uh, by this out uh, as a, by, the, uh, by this uh, construction, what makes uh, what, what makes uh, uh, concrete outside but not inside? How we uh, how we make it uh, very often? By this construction, we got very good, as I told already, 20% uh, better as normal energetic energetic dates, and we needed uh, for this uh, complicated function. Uh, if you come in, you see that the seams, the uh, the points of details are coming inside. Uh, but inside it is a very warm atmosphere, it makes by wood. And uh, I wanted very much, we wanted very much, the council wanted very much, that if you come in, you are not staying like you are in the entrance hall, you come in the library. And in this library you can leave, you can sit, you can read, and all books are open. You can touch the shelves, you can put the book out, and you can read this book. It's not, it's not closed, it is, it is really open for all visitors. And after that, uh, you go over the small staircase uh, inside of the halls. And you see these halls are not right angle cornered because of, the, uh, because of cantilevers. So you see that you have corners, you have like enfilade of smaller rooms. I have, I have thought uh, a lot about how wide should be the space uh, to uh, present drawings. And I come to the wideness of 3 meters 70 because it's good wide to uh, to make the drawings from both sides and to go along, but for that point the spaces are very very long, so you can 
uh, you can ex uh, <coughs> exhibit a lot of drawing on the walls and it is still wide enough to see both of them. Uh, we see here the pictures of the first exhibition uh, made with the 15 drawings, very, very interesting uh, drawings by Piranesi from Johnson Museum. Uh, that's preparation drawings for Pestum. And it was exhibited for the first time uh, worldwide because Johnson Museum found these spaces absolutely perfect uh, and uh, chosen us as a partner of the Johnson Museum for this concept and uh, for the uh, scale of the spaces and, of course, of the energe energetic uh, conditions of the spaces. Uh, and that is a room where you can come out and make a short rest uh, to see uh, the catalog and you see that even the furniture uh, makes from the same material and from the same elements and also the door lever are the continuity of the language uh, what you see in the building. And just upstairs you have very, very contrastful space in this internal contrast between base and uh, last floor, internal contrast, what I like in the contemporary architecture, and you see here office and uh, curator space with the outside terrace where you can see over Berlin. Uh, and last but not least, you go from surface, from elements of the facade to the door lever, as I explained already by more pragmatic projects, but in the same time, we explain the same story uh, of handcraft uh, from uh, town planning, I would say, from the facade to the smallest detail of the building, what I think is very, very important. And I'm very glad that uh, the building is very good visited and we have a lot of uh, interested visitors, not only architects, but really a lot, a lot of people. And I think on this way, architectural drawing, and it is the first museum so far I know of this art, uh, can be the part of uh, our also professional life. Thank you very much.